Hi there, I'm Lynn Fries. I'm the author of this book, Carl Discovers Math in Art. Carl loves school. Each weekday morning, he'd get up and make his bed, eat his breakfast of delicious sunflower seeds, carefully brush his soft, silky tail six times, and grab his knapsack, kiss his mother goodbye, and head out the door. The early morning walks to school with his friends delighted Carl. Marnie Marmot always found something to take to school for show and tell. Willie Mouse counted bushes, birds, and big rocks as he scampered along. Sometimes he pointed out shapes in the clouds, like an oval. In school, Mrs. Meadowlark, Carl's teacher, made learning fun with games, puzzles, and songs. Reading, art, science, and gym were Carl's favorite subjects. But as the new year school started, Carl began to fall behind in math class. Subtraction was difficult for him, and he forgot the names of shapes. What's wrong, Carl? asked Willie Mouse as they walked home from school one day. You seem very sad and quiet. Ah, oh, math is so hard for me, sighed Carl. Triangles and rectangles, 14 minus six, greater than, smaller than. Why is math so important? Mathematics is important for life, exclaimed Willie. If you go to the store to buy something for your dad, you need to either give the right amount of money or receive the correct change. If you are going to be an architect or an engineer and build things, you need math for work. If you want to become a doctor and write prescriptions for the sick, you need math to know what amount to give to the patient. Oh, I had no idea you need math for everything, said Carl in a surprised voice. You need my help, my friend, said Willie, as he turned down the path toward his house. Tomorrow is Saturday, he added. So meet me up at the museum after lunch. I'll show you something surprising about math and art. The next day found Carl standing in front of Clint Olberg's three bronze panels hung on the wall. Look closely, said Willie softly. Do you see triangles, rectangles, and an oval, he asked as he traced in the air below the panels. I do, Carl said in amazement. Here's Coyote by John Nitto, pointed out Willie, as they stood on a bench looking at the colorful painting. Tell me some shapes the artist painted. Oh, rectangles of bright colors, freckles that are circles, and two triangle ears that are the same size, said Carl. Wow. Math shapes are everywhere. The two friends moved down the hall. They heard a familiar voice say, Good afternoon, Carl and Willie. How nice to see my students here. We're looking at shapes and art, explained Carl. Hmm, what an excellent idea. We'll come here for our Friday field trip, said Mrs. Meadowlark. You and your friends can teach the class and off she hopped. Oh my golly, what are we going to do? squeaked Willie in dismay. We'll join you, said Larky Lark as she came around the corner with Marnie Marmot by her side. We overheard your conversation with Mrs. Muddler, said Marnie, and we'll be happy to work with you. Let's show our class how much fun math can be using art. Great idea, said Carl. Come on, everyone, let's put our heads together and make a plan. This is going to work out just fine. So Carl chose the word patterns and shapes. And off to the climber studio he went. He studied all the Native American designs he could find. Marnie Marmot selected comparisons. She scoured the museum galleries for examples. 
She took photos and measured bronzes and paintings with her tape measure. Willie Mouse and Larky Lark worked as a team. They created silly songs about additions and subtraction using the many animals they found in the paintings. On Friday, the math class boarded the school bus for their field trip to visit the museum. Mrs. Meadowlark explained that everyone was to use soft voices inside the building. Why, asked a student, there are visitors who want to look at art without lots of noise. That's why we always use our soft voices in museums, answered Carl. Once inside, the class went directly to the auditorium and sat down. Mrs. Meadowlar quieted the students and then introduced the four friends in their program, Math in Art. Willie and Larky taught funny addition and subtraction songs. The class giggled over ten moose on the loose. Six went away in a caboose. Four fell in the juice. Marnie showed her examples of comparisons. Everyone got the correct answers to bigger than, greater than, smaller than, and less than. When same as and equal to illustrations were shown, the class all agreed they now understood what the word comparison meant. Carl walked the students around the museum galleries, pointing out the shapes and wildlife art he had discovered with Willie. The class favorites were the patterns on the Native American parflesh bags and moccasins. The groupings of like shapes together created beautiful art. Back at school, their teacher praised the fourth friends for making the math and art trip special for all the students. Everyone learned today, said a pleased Mrs. Meadowlark. But the happiest of all was Carl. Now he understood what Mrs. Meadowlark was teaching in math class. No longer did he struggle to learn. In fact, his favorite subject now is math. Thanks for watching. See you next time on Bedtime Buckaroos.